My father and uh, another guy started a general repair shop, Automatic Transmissions Incorporated, or ATI, in, in 1961. And drag racing wasn't how it started, or racing wasn't. It started with a big customer called Yellow Taxi Cab. We were in Silver Spring near Washington, D.C. This is all before my time. You know, NHRA came along, racing came along. It uh, wasn't too many years later that everything kind of caught up and guys all of a sudden wanted their bracket cars to go fast. I really grew up at ATI, learning a little bit of everything, um, not everything about all of it, but a little bit of everything and, and really had my hands involved in all of it. I was taking apart valve bodies and transmissions, um, you know, when I was seven years old. So when I was about 12, we started go-kart racing. He'd already been drag racing and, and providing parts and doing anything for 25 years. So he might have been a little burned out at the time. So, so we decided to go go-kart racing. Then we went circle track racing and spec chassis trucks and the ASA circle track series. It all comes back to drag racing. Drag racing is what we were founded on. Drag racing is our company. And, and that is the, the core of our business is, is drag racing and high performance. My father had two top fuel funny cars, which he said was uh, not the smartest move he ever made, but he, uh, it, those went away and then there was nothing for a while. In 2009, the drag pack from Chrysler was introduced and, and we wanted to, to get one of those and, and we were able to. And in 2010, it was one of the first cars done and we started drag racing and started developing our, our 904s, our 727s. and. Then the Copo Camaros came along in 2012 and, and we got one of those to run super stock with and we run that car a lot uh, in five different trims so far and, and we're always testing our product ourselves. You know, I'm not gonna put something out there for the customer to be the guinea pig. So that's why we have these cars, they're, they're tools for us and that's, that, that's how we really rely on making our parts better for the customer. So horsepower became fairly cheap and fairly easy to get in RPM. Uh, some of the hardest, the, the hardest two things for us from dampers, transmission, converters is a lot of horsepower, a lot of weight, and then not a lot of gear and a sticky tire. So as tire technology changed and everything got sticky, uh, you know, there was a pretty long lull of horsepower. And then all of a sudden, a thousand horsepower is commonplace. 1,500 horsepower is commonplace. 1,000 shot of nitrous. Things happen, it's crazy. When it's our fault, we own it. Um, you know, and, and we ask our customers to do the same way. And, and when they do that, that's, it's amazing how much they can get back from us when they call and say, hey, I messed up. What can I do? So the, the ATI Super Damper came along for a need uh, to really get around OEM dampers that were failing, uh, viscous style dampers that didn't perform well at high RPMs, and, and they still don't. And the, the damper was a necessity for a friend of my father. So he had failed OEM dampers, he was turning 7,000 RPM, and, and all of a sudden we're having issues. So the damper started and came along, and it's just grown exponentially. NASCAR engine builders got a hold of it, uh, Spenny, with uh, RCR for Dale Earnhardt. And they were one of the first guys to really adopt it, put it on all the motors, and they realized they could turn more RPM, not fail valve springs, not hurt cranks, and so they could run more gear, so Dale could get a nose under somebody with the more gear and keep on going. You know, we are not the only damper a NASCAR team can run, but we are the only damper a NASCAR team runs. All of them, 100% of the field. In uh, 78, 79, my, my father saw a need to have a better way to weld together torque converters. You know, your height has to be right, your concentricity has to be right, and your parallelism has to be right. To do all that while your welding is really hard, you know, the, the part is being pulled and tweaked while it's going. So, so he developed a converter welding system, and there's 167 of those in use around the world, from China to Japan to New Zealand to Canada and you name it. The CNC side of it's important for us. It was important for my father. Uh, he had one of the first three-axis CNC machines in the country in the very early 80s. It was a Wasino, which was still here when I got here from college. We do our programming and everything in-house. Uh, we do 
We do everything in house we can. Graphic design, the CNC machines, you name it. Uh, my mom claims she's going to retire at some point. We'll uh, we'll see. And uh, but she's here every day. My wife's here. My son, who's five and a half, would very much like to be here every day, all day long. Uh, he will sort bolts and make bolt packs. As far as I can tell, he's pot committed, which is good for, for me. Um, it, I think that's exactly how I was growing up. It takes us into today. We, we sell 99% of the parts we make and use to other racers, competitors, small shops, you name it. So. You know, today we're we're right around 70 people split over two companies and uh, 32 CNC machines and making chips all day long. For us, quality comes first. Uh, you know, performance of our products is essentially important. There's a lot of competition out there for everybody, but we we really try to sell quality and value and. We test our parts ourselves as best we can. We don't let anybody be a guinea pig for us, and it seems to be working, so that's what we'll keep doing.